Okay, so I'm going to go through anesthesia in two messes for you and talk to you about how I do it and how you can potentially do it. Um, we're, th there's really three ways to give anesthesia orally, which I'll talk to you about how I use it. And some people just use that as their only method, and that actually works very, very well. IV can work very well. I use IV, but the one thing you need to know is that one, you don't necessarily need it. A lot of people don't use it. It's also state regulated, so you have to be careful if you're giving intravenous sedation and, the, and you don't have an accredited surgical facility or whatever your state regulations dictate for you. When I'm doing FUE, I do it with, go ahead and you uh, plug in for me. Uh, I, I do it with, um, back into here. Perfect. I, I typically do it under oral. And then I am, I, I give some Ketorolac at the end of the case, but you can also give I am uh, medications for sedation so long as, once again, check your state regulations in terms of what is appropriate. And I always encourage you, whatever you do, have, whether you're just even doing oral, is always have safety measures, crash carts, things like that, be ACLS trained for patient safety. So my regimen for oral medications, I start with typically 20 milligrams of Valium, although there's some variations with that, and I pre-medicate the patient about 30, 30 minutes before I start working on them. At 7.30, I give them a little bit of intravenous medication. Again, this is how I do it, uh, as well as uh, some fentanyl for discomfort. And then at lunchtime, I give them a little pain medication, some Vicodin, with some Xanax for anxiety and get them more calmed down for the graft placement in the afternoon. And at the end, I give them a little IM shot of uh, Ketorolac or Toradol, and I, uh, this, this cocktail has worked well for me. When I start, uh, I don't always do this, but I oftentimes do about a half a cc of bupivacaine in the supraorbital notch, and that's gonna be right where you feel that little notch here. You don't need to get the supertrochlear immediately because that doesn't go to the hairline. And then I sometimes go and do a little bit of the zygomatical temporal, which is just at the landmark of the lateral um, uh, eyebrow. The reason to do that is that it makes the ring block in the front a little more comfortable. And also, in some patients that burn through their medication quickly, I like it because it gives a more consistent anesthesia for the remainder of the case. So that's something that you can do. Once I get that in, I do a lidocaine ring block, typically 10 cc's in the back and 10 cc's in the front of just 1% to 100,000 epinephrine. I'll buffer it if the person's awake. And actually, Ken Williams, my, my colleague, showed me this little Blaine device, which is really awesome, and I'll show it to you in this talk uh, as one of the alternatives to help with minimizing discomfort. And then, I, then we're gonna have a whole talk, which will be my talk next, about the importance of tumescence uh, before we do the harvesting. So we, we do that, and you already heard from Mike about how he does uh, the, the site planning. We don't have to talk about that. The analogy I like to use, which I'll use in the next slide as well, is there's a ship at low tide and there's a ship at high tide. And what that means is that your blade, as you're harvesting, can tr which is your, your ship, can transect the corals below, if, and that's the nerve and blood supply, if you don't have water or fluid between the two. So the tumescence really protects the nerve and blood supply. It can align the hairs, and it's good for both the donor and recipient. And we'll talk about, and we'll have a little video of how I do uh, the tumescence and anesthesia for each of those parts, as well as how to mix it. Then I use bupivacaine or lidocaine. I do this about an hour or so after the ring block is in, and I'm ready to do the recipient sites, and the donor site is already closed. Uh, the reason you want to do it sequentially is that marcaine is a little bit more uncomfortable than lidocaine. You want the lidocaine to start, about to start wearing down so those receptor sites where the, the lidocaine is are fading so the bupivacaine will work better and that will give you a long anesthesia. There's a new uh, medication, the liposomal version that can last 72 to 96 hours, which I think is fascinating. I haven't uh, tried that yet. Um, and the bupivacaine should ride out the rest of the procedure in many of the patients. Then I come back and I'm now doing the recipient site to mescence and I do that sequentially. I'll, I'll put it where I'm gonna make my sites because it takes me about an hour to make my sites or maybe 30 minutes, could be an hour and a half depending on the number. And I'll slowly build that to mescence again to protect the blood supply as I'm making those sites because if you transect the vascular supply, your grafts may not grow as well. You may have issues with uh, donor site, uh, excuse me, recipient site healing, et cetera. Um, I use platelet-rich plasma and A-cell, no financial affiliations with the companies. And that just, for me, has been a great thing that has helped growth. Again, you'll hear a more detailed talk that I'll give uh, tomorrow about this. This is, I, I hate busy slides, but this is just there to show you that this has actually been sent to you, so you have this. this is also in my book that I wrote. Um, so I just use a 10cc lidocaine in the front, 10cc in the back, 
Then I come back and put 10 cc's of the quarter percent marquee in the front and the back, and that's all this busy slide says for my anesthesia. The, the recipient and donor to medicine is slightly different. The recipient sites, usually I use a little bit of uh, uh, catalog in there just to help with uh, edema in the front side. Um, and I usually do it sequentially. If you want to know how much I use, it's somewhere between 50 to 80 cc's done over a period of an hour. With a donor, which again, you'll see some videos about that, I'm actually tumescing all at one time to create a blanched surface that's taut and white that works well. Uh, I have no financial affiliation, again, with this, but I love the self-filling uh, device. It allows me to rapidly put donor tumescence in a safe way where I'm not going to stick myself, and you'll see that. And here's a short video of me mixing the stuff. Okay, so that's just a quick overview, and then I'm going to break it down specifically with the uh, donor harvesting and as the next talk. So we're going to go to that coming up. Any questions or anything so far? Yes, do you have a mic?